Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and it's time once again for your weekly wrap up and I want to begin first as we always do by thanking our newest Patreon supporters. We have Dr. Bill Bailey, Victor Aguilera and T.M. Watchenfeld. I want to thank everyone who contributed to the Patreon this week as well as everyone who has been on a regular basis as well as all of you who watch on a regular basis too because we are growing and all of those things together are what it takes to make a channel continue to grow. So I want to thank everyone for their continued support. And we don't have a sponsor of the wrap-up this week, so our non-ad is an affiliate link over to audible.com. It is an Amazon company, as you can see up here, and they offer great audio books, and you can get them on a monthly subscription basis. I think I pay $14.99 a month, and I get one book as part of that deal, and usually those books cost more than $14.99 if I wasn't an Audible subscriber. I've got a lot of uh, great nonfiction books that I like to listen to on Audible because it's a great way to read uh, if you don't have a lot of time, because as I'm doing chores around the house or taking the dog out for a walk, I can read a book, which is one of the things that I love about Audible. And if you are a fan of books and want to read more, this is a great way to consume those books. And you can find uh, your Audible account at lon.tv slash audible. And I do believe you get a free book just for trying it out. So this week we had seven videos uploaded between the two channels, not counting last week's wrap up. Uh, that includes a bunch of unboxings in 4K on the Extras channel. I've been doing those unboxings in 4K for a while because my phone shoots at 4K. It's kind of cool to be able to uh, do something at that resolution. At some point, we'll have the same capability here on the main channel. And uh, in 1080p on the main channel, we looked at uh, four different products this week. The Moto Mod Gamepad for the Motorola Z series phones. I'll talk a little more about that when we get to the Q&A section. We had a 1080p projector from BenQ that actually was pretty decent and bright for the price. You can check that out uh, in the master playlist link down below. We also took a look at the Canon PIXMA printer here. Not all that interesting to subscribers, but what's really interesting to me is that just about every time I post a printer review, uh, when you fast forward about a year in time, they usually end up with a couple hundred thousand views, give or take. So sometimes these uh, printers take a while to get some momentum, but uh, they are the most viewed videos on the channel for a product category. It blows my mind every time. We also looked at the Xiaomi Air 13.3, which is a revision on a great laptop we looked at last year. Uh, this new one has a seventh generation Intel processor, not the eighth, unfortunately, uh, but it does have an MX150 GPU. So we saw a pretty sizable uh, graphics performance increase on the same hardware for the most part. Really nice laptop, thin and light and small. And a lot of people always complain that it's overpriced for what it has inside of it. Yes, you can get something for less money with the same configuration, maybe even a little better, but you're going to be lugging around a big, ugly laptop. Uh, this is a very slim and light uh, device here that actually has a GPU on board, which many 13.3 inch laptops do not. So that was why I really am into these Xiaomi laptops. And I think a lot of you might find that interesting. So now it's time for a couple of things that are on my mind. And this is week 31 of my full-time endeavor here, being a full-time YouTube creator. And it was another productive week. Uh, Corey is getting up to speed on stuff. And we had a really productive uh, three days. He's in here Monday, uh, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I was shooting stuff. He was editing stuff. And I went away Friday afternoon for a little family getaway. And I had all of my stuff done for the rest of the week, pretty much done on Wednesday. Wednesday. I still had a lot of work to do uh, through Thursday and part of the day on Friday, but it was nice to not have the pressure of having to keep producing all this video while I'm trying to get uh, other parts of the business worked on. So that was really the goal here in bringing on somebody. And uh, this was the first week where I really felt like we started uh, getting uh, into our stride here. So really good productive week. And I am sure this week will be equally productive. So I am uh, very pleased with where things are going. Also, I wanted to mention before I go on to the next uh, topic here, I'm going to be running an ad experiment over the next two weeks, and it's going to be a pre-roll thing, not something that's part of my content. So I definitely uh, want to see how well that does. If you see me pop up in an ad somewhere, uh, let me know down in the comments. And I just want to keep an eye on uh, what your experiences are versus what my analytics happen to say. Now, we got some news this week, actually a lot of news to talk about. Uh, the first is that it looks like Xiaomi now has a 15-inch laptop in addition to the 13 that we just reviewed. Uh, this one, though, looks like it has largely the same specifications. It does have the 8th generation Intel processor, so that, of course, now is going to be a quad-core chip. Uh, whereas before, that class of processor was dual-core, so we should see a CPU bump on these. 
Uh, surprisingly though, for a 15 inch pro level laptop that is going to cost about $1,000 to $1,200, this only has an MX150 GPU built in. I was expecting a little more beefier GPU in this thing given that it is a higher priced machine, but it does not have that. I will try to get one of these in though in the next few weeks and uh, try it out. Some folks have gotten some already and have reviewed them online. And if I get one, we'll do a video on that. I also wanted to let you know because a bunch of you had written in about this that our occasional sponsor here, HD Home Run, has a new device out, a four tuner antenna for digital television. This one will work only with over the air signals, but uh, before you had to buy two boxes to get four channels at the same time, uh, now you can buy one box and get four. And if you already have a two channel tuner, uh, this will work alongside of it. So you'll have six things that you can record at once over the air if you get all your antennas plugged in the right way to this thing. Unfortunately, I'm probably not going to be taking a look at this because I don't get anything over the air where I live. I gotta probably put up a huge tower here to get uh, some TV signals, but I probably won't be able to do a fair shake of this product just because I can't pick up anything over the air. This story kind of depressed me because I was here from the beginning with this product. Uh, AIM, AOL Instant Messenger, is shutting down after 20 years of service. In fact, I got on this right when they made it available to everyone who wasn't on AOL. So this kind of lived inside of the AOL platform back in the late 90s and then uh, they released a separate client that worked over the internet. I was still in college. I was like probably on the tail end of my senior year of college and uh, all of my friends got it immediately and we were chatting away with each other. In fact, we stopped calling each other on the phone uh, because it was more efficient to type a message to each other. We could also leave away messages. So we knew when people were in their dorm rooms or not. Remember, we didn't have uh, smartphones or uh, many of us didn't even have laptops at that point, but it was a good way to know if somebody was uh, around and you could uh, message them. And I know a lot of uh, my younger viewers probably uh, did a lot of communication over this when they were in school as well. So it is finally done. And I did try to log into my account, but I can't get into it anymore, unfortunately. It just must have lapsed or something when I didn't touch it. And as I read this announcement, I was really bummed out that I couldn't get into my account. This is something I logged into probably for the better part of a decade, if not more. And one day I just stopped using it, probably because everyone else that I chatted with moved on to another service. A lot of my friends now are on Gchat or uh, Facebook Messenger or just using text messaging. And uh, that was it for AIM. And just one day I just didn't log into it and never logged in again. And I'm kind of disappointed I can't go in and uh, take a look at my account one last time. But if you have used AIM in the past, you might want to pop in there and see uh, what is going to be gone when that service is kaput. I also found this on Gizmodo the other day, and this is something I wanted to bring up for uh, the movie buffs out there. And uh, James Gunn and a bunch of other Hollywood directors are uh, finally getting together and asking TV makers to stop doing this interpolation thing. And what that is usually on your TV is that motion smoothness feature that makes everything look like a soap opera. Some people like it, but uh, filmmakers do not. And the reason is, is that most movies, and there are some exceptions to this, but most movies are shot at 24 frames per second, 24p. And when you uh, use this motion interpolation stuff, it actually makes these movies run at a much smoother frame rate, but that was not the intention of the director. And most of these televisions do support 24p mode. In fact, that's something we test every time we look at anything that might uh, touch a home theater, including that projector we looked at the other day. So the TV is already built to handle this proper frame rate, but uh, this interpolation is on by default and while it looks nice on a showroom perhaps if you're displaying sports content or something it does not look good for movies and it was not what the directors intended and now there's a bunch of directors uh, joining the call to finally get the TV industry to change the default setting on these TVs and it could not happen soon enough in my opinion uh, there is a petition on change.org uh, that is gathering support here. There's about 12,342 people signing it at the time I'm recording this. I did add my voice to it as well. And if you are uh, serious about your movies and really want to get the word out, I would suggest signing this petition because it's something that's been bugging me for a long period of time. Every time a new family member gets a, well, a family member gets a new TV, uh, I run over to their house and immediately turn off this interpolation as I'm helping them get everything up and running. It really makes stuff look like garbage, in my opinion. And and it needs to be off unless it's maybe a sporting event 
or something like that. So sign the petition and get your voice heard too. And if you want more background information on 24P and why it's important, The Missing Remote did an article on this a while back, which I'll link to at lon.tv slash 24P, and you'll get uh, the whole lowdown here as to exactly why this is important to filmmakers, but also to film buffs like myself. Definitely check it out. It's a great read. And now it's time for some Q&A from you, the viewers. And our first question comes in from Mr. Marbles, who remembers that I was a Star Trek fan, or am a Star Trek fan, and was curious what I thought of the new Discovery series. And he was also wondering if I had an opinion on the Orville and perhaps the CBS All Access Service. And I would say that uh, the CBS All Access Service I'm going to give a thumbs down to. I really don't like this notion of having to subscribe to a service to watch one show. If I was a, a bigger TV watcher of the things that CBS might have on their network, maybe this would have more value to me, but I already have a Netflix subscription. I already subscribe to HBO, and I've also got an Amazon Prime account. I really don't want to pile on uh, more subscription services. I would have preferred uh, to just buy the series outright and uh, buy, it, buy it for the season like I've done with a bunch of other shows and then be able to access it whenever I want. Because if I watch Discovery through the first season and then cancel the subscription, I can't watch Discovery anymore even though I invested into a whole season's worth of episodes. And one of the problems with CBS All Access is that uh, they only release an episode every week. They do it just like they would have done it if it was on a regular TV network. So unfortunately, I think the show is going to be a bit hobbled by their sales strategy with it. I would have preferred that there be a way to purchase it outright. I do have, uh, I did do the, the minor, the $5 a month thing, so I do have to watch some ads to get uh, the show, but I really don't like doing that. I'm just doing it because I want to support Star Trek, and I do plan on canceling that subscription as soon as the season finale airs, and I'm going to be kind of bummed out not to be able to gain access to that content afterward. Really, these studios need to get with the program and realize uh, that people want to have flexibility in how they watch things, not watch things on the terms of the studios or the networks, but they still haven't yet learned their lesson yet, have they? But that said, the show is very good. In fact, I was surprised how good it was. Uh, they really blew up the entire plot line literally from the get-go, which I think a lot of people were not anticipating. I think they were anticipating, as I was, a more traditional Star Trek show. This is a very different approach. Uh, the characters here are engaged in a war with the Klingons, and this predates the whole Captain Kirk era. And uh, from what I understand, this is a uh, Star Trek canon show. It's not part of the J.J. Abrams reboot that you see in the movies. And I was glad to see that because although I thought the J.J. Abrams movies were entertaining, it wasn't the cerebral Star Trek that I remembered. Uh, this one is leaning more towards a traditional Star Trek show, but it is grittier and it is darker and uh, it's taken on a very different approach, again, right off the bat than I anticipated, which is kind of refreshing, even though it is a uh, tenser storyline. But this was really, uh, I think, a very nice uh, reboot of a Star Trek series that uh, actually respects the original content. They did change the way the Klingons looked, which I wasn't crazy about, but I have been enjoying the show, and I think it's got a lot of potential, just given the uh, freedom they now have to operate with this entirely new approach to a Star Trek story. So all in, uh, very well done. The special effects are actually very good on this show, and uh, I am really looking forward to watching it again tonight, as a matter of fact. I'm shooting this on Sunday night, so I am pleased with that. And that brings us to The Orville, which was another show that did not go in the direction that I anticipated. So I thought that this would be a Star Trek spoof, which it largely is. It doesn't take itself all that seriously, but then all of a sudden it does. And they've got all these weighty moral and ethical issues that the characters run into uh, while still doing all of the uh, potty humor and ex-wife stuff that Seth MacFarlane is known for doing. And it really feels feels kind of disjointed at times because when they've got this really serious weighty topic they then uh, introduce a bunch of dumb humor and the characters don't seem to be uh, following a lot of military discipline like they might on Star Trek yet they are uh, accomplishing some important stuff while they're uh, goofing around so it's kind of a weird show uh, at the same time I kind of like it just because it reminds me a little bit of Star Trek the next generation the set pieces look very familiar the uh, characters I think line up with some of the characters you might have uh, seen on some of those past Star Trek shows. And I don't know where this one goes. They've certainly put a lot of money into its production value. It's a really nicely produced show. 
Uh, kind of fun to watch, but again, it really feels like uh, two different things that are kind of mashed together, and I'm not sure what to make of it just yet. You know, if you want to do a spoof, you do a spoof. Spaceballs is a great example of that. It's a comedy movie that uh, spoofs Star, uh, Star Wars, and it's a spoof all the way through. It doesn't tackle any real weighty subjects here. Uh, this show spoofs and then hits a weighty subject right in the middle of it, and it's just kind of a weird thing, and the characters try to take themselves seriously even when uh, they sometimes don't, and that's what's really kind of bugging me about the show. I got to keep watching it to really uh, develop a better opinion of it, but I really kind of liked it at the beginning, and now I'm just kind of trying to figure out uh, what exactly it is and where it goes from here, and perhaps that is exactly what they're trying to figure out themselves, but I'd love to hear uh, your comments down below on what you think of Star Trek Discovery and the Orville. And this next question comes in from frequent viewer James Roofer, who had a question about fan noise and how I might be able to record that for future reviews. And this is, of course, referring to uh, laptop computers that I review. And this is something that I think is impossible to accurately convey. And this is very similar to a uh, question I answered a few months ago about reviewing speakers. You really can't convey what a speaker sounds like through a YouTube video because it's going to be impacted by what you're listening to the video with. If you're on a cell phone, kind of holding the speaker up to your ear, it's going to sound different than it might out of your own laptop versus what it might sound like with headphones. The bottom line is you can't represent it accurately. So this is a subjective thing, unfortunately, but I will tell you what I hear and uh, give you an idea of what my thresholds are for something that might be too loud or perhaps isn't that loud at all. And I'll give you a Great preview. I'm going to be reviewing at some point in the near future my Alienware gaming laptop that I got a few weeks ago. And that fan is freaking loud. And I'm going to talk about how loud it is. And I try to convey to you exactly what I am hearing when that fan goes off. But again, just like speakers, this is really difficult uh, to accurately portray, which is, I think, why it's important that product reviewers like me exist so that we can tell you what we hear and do our best to try to explain it. That was one of the things that I noticed with that Xiaomi laptop is that its fan actually sounded different than uh, some other 13-inch laptops I reviewed recently. It was less higher pitched. It had a much lower pitch to the sound that it made and that was what I tried to get out in the uh, course of the review. What I have found with fan reviews, though, is that if I find something isn't loud, somebody else might think it is. Some folks just can't stand the noise at all. Others aren't bothered by it. Others like me know that it's there and just accept it because it's the physics of, of the, how the processor works. But uh, it's something, again, that's going to be subjective to every person. And I think if it bothers me, it'll definitely bother people who have a low threshold for it. But I'll try to do a better job of uh, giving you a better idea as to what the fan actually sounds like. But to that end, I would love to hear from you as to what uh, kinds of things I should be explaining when describing uh, what the fan noise is like. So let me know down in the comments below. And Michael Billings Cole writes in about our Moto Mod gamepad review I did the other day. And as you all know, I've been very focused lately on input lag for everything that we look at here on the channel, whether it's a monitor, a game controller, or a game console. And it's something that's been really intriguing to me because we're seeing some pretty poor performance on Android when you're using a game controller. And it doesn't matter what you're using, even something like the Moto Mod, which is hardwired to the phone, is not doing any better than some of the cheap uh, Bluetooth controllers we have looked at in the past also. There's something wrong here. Now, uh, Michael here brings up a point that uh, if you're playing an emulator, of course there's going to be some input delay just given all the layers here that he lists. But uh, the fact is, in the review, we were not looking at, a, at an emulated version of Sonic the Hedgehog. We were looking at a port of Sonic the Hedgehog. It was a remaster that was made that uh, made the old game run on uh, these new platforms, but it wasn't emulating it. It's actually a port, and we're just not seeing the performance that we should be seeing, especially out of a hardwired controller. And uh, we're seeing better performance on PCs, for example. We're seeing better performance on uh, other types of emulation consoles, like the uh, FPGA-based uh, Analog NT Mini that does exceptionally well. Even the Nintendo Switch, which is built with essentially Android hardware, it is a portable version of the NVIDIA Shield TV, uh, that one is coming in with about 60 milliseconds or so of a button delay using their Pro Controller over Bluetooth. So surely we should be doing better uh, with something that is hardwired. And I think the controller is fine. It's probably the stuff going on inside of Android as it relates to game controllers. It's an area that they need to make some improvements on because the button lag, especially for playing retro or retro-inspired games, is just not good enough uh, for players to actually have a, sh a shot at winning here unless the programming is 
adjusted. Input lag is a big issue. There are many factors here, as Michael points out, and it's certainly never going to be like it was in the old days where you had next to no input lag, given that everything was hardwired up with uh, analog controls with no image processing. But uh, I think these companies can do better, and we're seeing better performance on PC. We're seeing better performance from the Nintendo Switch, for example. And uh, when it comes to Android, I think there's something going on here that is really delaying those button signals from getting to whatever software you're running. And I think it's time for them to make some adjustments. So I'm going to keep bringing this up because it should be better than it is. And I'm not going to stop bringing it up until it gets better. And I'm hoping one day to report that it has been improved. And uh, until then, we'll keep uh, mentioning it and testing it in future reviews. And now it's time for a Q&A for you. This is going to be a rerun of a Q&A for you because every couple of weeks, I'd love for you to all go to uh, gearbest.com and find some stuff that you'd like me to get in here to review. They want to send me some more stuff, but I like to get your input as to what I should be looking at. So there's some interest from viewers before I grab it. As you know, Gearbest sells a lot of uh, stuff you can't get in my neck of the woods here in the United States, and a lot of it is uh, fairly inexpensive compared to name brand gear. So let me know if you found anything on there you want me to bring in, and I will consider getting it in here for a review. And our channel of the week this week is the Nostalgia Nerd, and this guy is nothing short of a machine. He's cranking out really detailed and well-researched content about two or three times a week. And this is not like uh, just a little passing video about some crazy retro thing. He's going deep into this stuff, uh, sometimes in excess of 45 minutes to an hour on some topics. He just did a big expose on the uh, Cyrix processor from the 90s. It was a uh, Intel compatible processor and he went all in on this thing and really gave you a great history of it, stuff I never even heard about before. Uh, he is digging up really great stuff. Uh, definitely check him out. I think if you're a fan of uh, lazy game reviews, for example, you'll probably like what this guy is doing and uh, he is just cranking away and his subscriber base is growing steadily as a result. This is a great example of what you need to do to build the channel. You just got to go all in and just keep cranking stuff out and see what reaction you get from viewers. And that is what it looks like he's doing here. He crossed 100,000 subscribers not all that long ago and he's already uh, added another 20,000 or so uh, since he hit that milestone. Definitely check him out. Great stuff for retro computer fans. So this week I've got a bunch of stuff planned, including a review of the iPhone 8 Plus. And what I like to do whenever a new iPhone comes out is compare it to the prior version. In this case, we'll be looking at it uh, compared to the iPhone 7 Plus, and uh, we'll answer the question as to whether or not it's worth upgrading to the new phone. Now this phone is coming in on loan from a sponsor that I'll be talking about during that review. They offer a, a service that's complementary to uh, perhaps a broken iPhone or something of that nature. So I'll have more info on what that's all about a little bit later when that review posts. And we're also going to be taking a look at some of the video footage that you can take with this phone because it does shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second. That's one of its differentiators over the 7 Plus, and I'll be editing up some uh, footage I shot over the weekend in Nantucket, Massachusetts, and posting it up on the Extras channel so you can see what uh, that looks like out of the phone. If my computer, of course, is able to edit 4K video at 60 frames per second, it does encode that video in HEVC, so it'll be a fun experiment to see how I can edit some uh, newer formats of video. I've also got a tablet coming in from GearBest. This is a Lenovo tablet, 8-inch Android, about 150 bucks. We'll see how well it stacks up to maybe the NVIDIA Shield K1, which unfortunately is not being made at the moment, which is a real bummer because that tablet was really pretty powerful. But uh, we'll see how this Lenovo might compare. I mean, look, I'm looking for something that uh, can kind of match that K1 tablet. And a little spoiler, I don't think it's going to be uh, that tablet. We're also going to be doing another didn't make the cut video. I've got three more things to bring up in uh, the didn't make the cut series. So uh, that will be on the horizon later this week as well. I'm sure we'll get some other stuff in too, so stay tuned. You'll never know what I might post or where my attention span takes me. And if you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon and make a monthly contribution to the channel. We also have my tip jar set up at lon.tv slash tip jar for a one-time contribution. If you're outside the United States, PayPal works pretty nicely too at lon at lon.tv. And of course, you can help out the channel just by signing up for a free Plex account at lon.tv tv slash plex no credit card required or you can gift a plex pass subscription to somebody you know at lon.tv slash plex gift we have a bunch of different channels you can find me on of course we've got the extras channel which is growing at a nice clip itself 
We have the podcast, and I might be doing a little more with the podcast now that I've got some uh, workflow going here the way I wanted it to go. I've been thinking about doing a dedicated podcast. I'd love to get your thoughts on whether or not you would listen to it. We're seeing a big uptick in uh, podcast traffic for this show. I put this in audio form of my podcast feed, but again, I'm thinking about doing something specific for the podcast format, so let me know what you think of that. We have the Snippets channel at lon.tv slash snippets for bite-sized pieces of things you've seen on this channel. I have my VidMe channel at lon.tv slash vidme, which largely echoes the extras channel. And we have my archive of live streams at lon.tv slash live streams. And we are thinking about doing a dedicated live stream on a regular basis too. So I will let you know about that. I do ask if you like what I see here to click that notification bell so that you always get notified when I post something up on the channel. And I have an email list at lon.tv slash email. I haven't sent out an email lately, but I will soon. It's a very infrequent list, but if you want to uh, get notices from me when I have something to tell you, uh, definitely subscribe to that email list. We have a Facebook page at lon.tv slash Facebook where I post several times a week. And of course, we have the store where I sell things that I bought to review on the channel and I'm now getting rid of uh, at a lower price than they are new. And these items were used just long enough to uh, do my review here on the channel. You can usually get some good deals. I have another email list to give you alerts as to when things do get listed on the store, which you can find at lon.tv slash store alert. And if there's something you like on the store that is priced maybe a little too high, make me an offer. I might haggle back and forth with you a little bit, but I'm always uh, eager to get things moving here. So let me know what your best price is. And that is going to do it for this week on the wrap up. Appreciate everybody tuning in. I am shooting this a little later in the day uh, than I usually do because I just got back from my trip and I'm hoping that this comes out cohesively. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Plenty of cool stuff happening this week and I want to thank you all again for your viewership and support. It means a lot and please keep those comments coming. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.